welcome in this video we will discuss about amphibian early development and also we will discuss about some of the experiments which are conducted by various scientists who has paved the way for the development of the amphibian organism so first of all we will see the, the those organisms which are uh, species which are used for the developmental studies uh, Xenopus levis it is very commonly used species frog species in the developmental biology of uh, amphibians that is uh, Xenopus levis and this is the also known as the African clawed frog then we have Rana papiens this is a, a northern leopard frog which is also norm, uh, commonly used in the uh, in the developmental biology of the amphibian species uh, amphibian uh. then we have Tetris tiniatus and Cristatus. these are the two species belongs to salamanders so newts they are commonly known as newts and these are used uh, widely in the early uh, st studies of developmental biology in the amphibian so when it comes to the amphibian organism the word itself simply uh, says that amphibian means those organisms which lives both in the water as well as in the terrestrial environment so water basically they required for the during the fertilization stages and they lay eggs which are known as a an amnionic egg so they don't have the amnionic layer above them which protects them in the terrestrial environment so they are um, called as a anamniotic vertebrates and the egg which is uh, produced by the amphibians especially these uh, modal organisms these are mesolecithal type of egg mesolecithal type of egg means the egg will be having the the moderate amount of yolk inside and one more speciality about the distribution of the yolk in this organisms is the yolk is distributed on one side of the egg so they will be having some polarity then the type of cleavage which is exhibited by the this type of egg mesolecithal egg and where the yolk is distributed towards one side of the egg so in this we will see the the type of cleavage is displaced radial holoplastic cleavage holoplastic because the cleavage will bisect the egg completely and the displaced because the area where the yolk is present that will be spared from the cleavage so why this amphibian organisms are widely used in the developmental biology Amphibian organisms are widely used in the developmental biology. Reason they are easily available. The other is the embryos which are present in these organisms. They are used for easy dissection studies, which is very important in the developmental biology to study the initial stages of development. So for this, this uh, embryo are very plays a important role. Then uh, we will see that how the the egg will be present and how the cleavages which are associated with the egg will be uh, helping us to study so this is a representative of the egg so as i told you that egg will be having some polarity so those areas where the yolk is present that is called the vegetal area vegetal area vegetal bone vegetal hemisphere or vegetal area and the place where so inside the egg the area where the yolk is sparsely present that is called as an animal pole and uh, you will also see uh, in the many of the test books they will be represented in one structure that is a gray crescent so we will talk about this in the later uh, video so what is the importance of it and how it is going to change the whole uh, developmental biology of the amphibian now apart from this what we also have to know is there are certain scientists who has worked in the early developmental uh, biology of amphibians in the late in the early 20th century their hands is and his students mangold 
then uh, later in 1980s, 70s and 80s, uh, this extension of the Hans Spiemann and Mangold work was carried out by Peter Newcube. So these are the, what they have done is they made a major contributions in understanding the mechanism by which the, the initial development is uh, carried out. Then Peter Newcock, uh, Nakamura. So these are the scientists who have worked a great and today whatever we are seeing in the amphibian development, they have been uh, discovered by this scientist. So to understand in a better way, so I have a model for understanding what exactly happens in case of uh, amphibian egg uh, development. Uh, so this is the, a representative model to explain how the the cleavages happens and how the the developmental process carried out so in a three dimensional way so this is the egg unfertilized egg and once it gets fertilized and before the fertilization occurs already they have some polarity so this is the area which is represented as a animal pole and this is the area which is represented as a, as a vegetable pole and in this area you will be having a yolk uh, inside the egg and the first cleavage which occurs in this organism it is the and uh, uh, apart from that there is one more structure as i showed you in this picture gray crescent so in this picture i have drawn here you can see this is a gray crescent area so we will talk about what is the this uh, gray crescent and what is significance of it in the uh, next video so so the first cleavage which happens in this organism is the the cleavage will bisects the the bisects the the gray crescent area bisects the gray crescent area this is the the first cleavage angle plane what you can call as a plane and the second plane is perpendicular to the first cleavage so first cleavage will be bisecting the the gray crescent area and the second will be bisect uh, will be perpendicular to the first cleavage so before the first cleavage completes uh, its cleavage process from animal pole to the vegetable pole the second cleavage will start so it is perpendicular to the first cleavage so it will be like this it will be like this and the third cleavage will be a little displaced away from the equatorial region towards the animal pole and this is because you have a lot of yolk present over this place and this will not allow the cleavage to occur so the third cleavage will be slightly above the here it will be slightly above the the equator so this is how the initial cleavages initial three cleavages will be occurring in the egg after fertilization so after fertilization it is known as zygote and in zygote how this initial cleavage will be occurring and this cleavage process will go on and this will lead to generation of the blastomeres so blastomeres are the outcome of the the various cycles of the cleavages which are happening in the zygote so these blastomeres will held together by some adhesion proteins so this adhesion proteins are nothing but eb catheter so these are the calcium dependent adhesion molecules which are present in the cell and these are plays a important role in binding the blastomeres together so this is how the initial blastomeres will be forming and this initial blastomeres uh, after 12th cycle they will undergo uh, a mid blastula stage and after that they will give uh, uh, they will enter into a gastrulation stage so this conversion from the initial cage uh, stage uh, initial blastomeres to the uh, blastula stage and blastula stage to the gastrulation stage we will discuss in the other video so in this we will also discuss why uh, what are the different uh, experiments conducted by the uh, this uh, great scientist and how they control how their contribution is important so hans spiemann and mangold they were known for it, their uh, classical studies and proposal of 
called as a organizers organizers so they have come up a concept called organizers what according to them there is a parts of the embryo developing embryo which is critical in the deciding the growth of the organism so those parts in the embryo what has they identified that is present in the gray crescent area so this is the area gray crescent area as i told you there is a gray crescent area which is uh, represented and uh, we will also discuss how this gray crescent area has formed and we will discuss about what is the significance of this gray crescent so what according to them this gray crescent area is one important uh, organizer which decides the fate of the organism so they have done some uh, initial experiments before identifying this uh, as a organizers so one of that experiment is that they have uh, mainly it was uh, done by the hans peeman and tracheus tineatus is the newt which they used for this study so what he has taken the speeman has taken a egg uh, after fertilization just after fertilization of newts and this egg after fertilization he has and after fertilization and before the first cleavage occurs he has taken it and he has tied it with the hair which was collected from his doctor so he has tied and in he tied so that the one part of the egg has got the the complete uh, nucleus and the other is only the cytoplasm so after 16 cell stage so this goes on dividing after 16 cell stage yes loosen this uh, tied hair so that the some cells has escaped into the area where earlier only cytoplasm was present so ultimately when they allow to grow when they allow to grow both the areas this as well as this area has given rise to a organism so the area where the cell has escaped and earlier there was only cytoplasm the organism is little smaller than the where the normal cells are divided so from this he has concluded that that all the cells have the capability to divide and in develop into a individual organism so this uh, led to a concept called the genomic equivalence so same amount of dna is present and same all the cells which are coming out of the initial developmental process are capable of developing into a complete organism so autonomous development concept has come in this uh, case so slightly little different experiments have conducted to see whether this happens in case of the already divided egg so in this case what he has taken is he has taken two organisms in one and the cut in the first case they tied parallel to the the first cleavage so that was very important in the first experiment which i showed you so he has tied the the hair parallel to the first cleavage process so first cleavage occurs in the the plane of the the gray crescent where the gray crescent is present there you will see this first cleavage is occurring so he has tied it in the parallel to the gray crescent so for understanding i will tell, show you in this picture so so it is how he has tied the this is how he has tied the hair parallel which is bisecting the first cleavage means parallel to the first cleavage and this part is devoid of the cells and this part is 
having a cell after 16 cell stage the cells from this has escaped here after loosening the hair over, over this place and once it has got loosened cells escaped into this area and both the both the parts here where the cells are presently numerous and the cells which are just arrived both the parts have developed into a two different organisms so two organisms have been evolved from this experiment from this single zygote so in this experiment what he has done is he has taken two nukes again two groups of nukes now in earlier case he has tied here which is passing through the gray crescent in this case also he has tied or he has bisected this organism after certain stages of development and in the second stage or in the second group instead of bisecting to the parallel to the parallel to the gray crescent if you see this from the side like if you see from this side so this is a gray crescent so first experiment he has tried like this and he has able to develop two organisms now he has now cut the the cell in this angle which is perpendicular to the first cleavage so in this angles where you will get that the gray crescent is concentrated at one side and the other side only you have a cytoplasm without the gray crescent now what he has seen with this uh, uh, cut is so this one you can represent like this in this picture so gray crescent is present here this is the equator so when the cut was done here like this this is a perpendicular to the first cleavage when the cut was cut done here like this in this experiment we already know that they have given individually two different organisms complete organisms have evolved but in this case only this part only the part where the gray crescent is retained that part has given rise to the complete organism and the part which is devoid of the gray crescent did not develop so the it is having some incomplete organism which is known as in this experiment as a belly fish so this part did not develop into a complete organism so from this simple experiment he came to conclusion that there is something which is present here which is responsible for the development of the organism so this is the part like this is the part which is represented here so once it is divided like this this area this area has not developed into a complete organism whereas this part which contains the gray crescent has developed into a complete newt so this concludes that this is this uh, gray crescent is important for the organism uh, development and it is deciding or it is uh, inducing the factors which is required for the developmental process so for because it is inducing these called as a organizers organizer elements so those uh, later on by many scientists it was discovered that the dorsal pore lip and the cells which are associated the ventral cells which are associated in the dorsal pore lip these are known as the organizer structures and these are important for the initial development of the organism so in those experiments done by spiemann and mangold they don't know what is the molecular mechanism behind what is exactly happening because at that time there was no molecular biology techniques have developed especially the antisense oligonucleotide chromatin remodeling experiments and staining experiments so this all experiments or techniques were not developed so well so they, it has become difficult for them to understand what is the exact mechanism behind them but they can they were able to identify that there are some regions in the developing embryo that is important for the development of the organism so likewise they have also performed some experiment in the gastrulation stages also and they have identified that that early gastrulation stage is important for the 
these organizers so they have taken a embryo two embryos again which is developing and is in the gastrulation stage gastrulation stage so in this in the first case they have taken a ectodermal neural tissue or neural cells from one developing embryo and replaced in the replaced in the replaced in the epidermal region replaced in the epidermal region of the another embryo in the early gastrulation stage now what they have identified they have replaced means they have transplanted sorry they have transplanted the the neural structures neural cells from one the uh, one embryo which is at the early gastrulation stage to the other embryo of the same species in the gastrulation in the same early gastrulation stage and have seen whether the cells will be De how the cells are going to develop so whether they are able to develop independently or they will be influenced by the cells where they have transplanted so what they have noticed is the neural cells which have been transplanted in the ectodermal region the organism ultimately developed into this part also has ultimately developed into a epidermal cells so what it indicates is the the cells which have been transplanted they did not develop independently that is they did not autonomously in, in, uh, develop they have been conditionally specified by the cells which are present adjacent to it so conditional specification conditional specification means the cells which are around has induced to develop them also into a ectodermal cells because they have replaced from the neural cells neural uh, plate cells to the ectodermal area so the cells which are present around the ectodermal area has decided them to divide into ectodermis so uh, epi epidermis similar experiment they have conducted in the so this was done in this was done in the early gastrulation stage but when they performed the same experiment in the late gastrulation late gastrulation stage they have found that the neural tissue or neural cells which has been transplanted from one embryo to the other embryo at the ectodermal region the cells which has been transformed they now developed into a neural tissue only neural plate only so this says that there has been differences in the early gastrulation stages and late gastrulation stages also means the cells are not specified they are not committed in the early gastrulation stage but as the gastrulation begins and comes to the late gastrulation stage they have been specified so something has occurred during the early gastrulation stage and the late gastrulation stage which makes them to specify their organization so the cells which are present at the late gastrulation stages they have developed into a mosaic that is independently they have developed into those organisms which they have to become so they are already committed so by the time they reach to the late gastrulation they are committed and they have developed into a individual autonomously they have evolved so late early gastrulation stage you will see the conditional development they are under the influence of the cells which are surrounding them even though they are transplanted from different regions so which is called as a conditional development and in the late gastrulation stage you will see that the cells have been already committed to become a particular organ so they are developing into that organ irrespective of where they have transplanted so this is a autonomous development autonomous is respective of whatever the conditions are present wherever they have placed whether they have placed in the ectoderm whether they are placed in the mesoderm endoderm whatever the locations they have placed they are developing into those organs which they have to become so they are already committed by the time they reach to the late gastrulation stage 
so all these clues have led to understanding that there are some factors which are influencing this developing embryo to get divided differently at different stages and they also concluded that the area of the gray crescent is very important during the developmental process so one more experiment they have done uh, they have taken a uh, blastopore area the gray crescent area uh, blastopore or blastopore lip they have taken and they have induced or they have transplanted this area where the gray crescent cells are present into the other embryo other second embryo <coughs> in the ventral side and surprisingly what they have found is they have found that these cells which are present in the gray crescent area which they called as yeah. organizers when they place it in the other opposite side of the embryo in the other in the other embryo where they have transplanted they have surprisingly found that this is able to raise a ventral side uh, ventral side of that new transplanted embryo has also developed into a, a dorsal side so two axes has formed so one axis is from here the other axis from here so two axes have formed during the developmental stages so this is how they found that how important is the gray crescent area and the cells associated with it and they called it as a organizers and uh, they have also come up with a proposal called primary embryonic induction primary embryonic induction primary embryonic induction means during the developmental stages these cells which are present in the gray crescent area which they later identified the cells uh, as a blastopore cell a blastopore lip cells these cells are responsible for the the specification of the other cells which are uh, undergoing the gastrulation so this is the experiments which were conducted by the hans spiman and van gold so before the this all this organizational work has been published van gold has accidentally died because of the fire accident and uh, she did not even see the publications uh, her work published but this work has paved the way for the future embryologists to work on this uh, aspect and identify what is the molecular mechanism behind that the organizer is able to dictate whatever the changes which has, has to be carried out by the organizer how it is decided what is exactly molecular so until 1980s it was not able to uh, perform these experiments because at those time the technology was not there to study all this the amount of protein which is available in these cells is very less the factors which are responsible it is very low concentration so only when the uh, cdna technology the antisen oligonucleotide technology all this has come then only they are able to find out the this uh, research then the one who has majorly contributed and identified that what are the factors uh, which are responsible and uh, there are some elements which are present uh, in the um, organism uh, in the vegetal structures and how they influence the organizational organizers is peter new cube he has come up with a uh, idea of uh, telling that the ventral cells which are present they are not uh, uh, uniformly distributed their inner content like the proteins which are present in the vegetal cells they are not uniform so there are certain proteins which are present in the dorsal side of the vegetal cells and in the ventral side of the vegetal cells which are responsible for organizing this organizers and this leads to understanding that why the the organizers have got the special ability to decide the developmental stages in the amphibian organism in the next video we will see what is the importance of the gray crescent how this gray crescent has formed and what are the different molecular mechanisms which are uh, involved in 
deciding the organizer what are the proteins which are present what are the uh, different paracrine factors which are present in them what exactly decided uh, decides this all phenomena we will discuss in the next video thank you